biological organisms are constantly interacting with the environment around them. ACE technique is how scientists prevent contamination in the spread of pathogens. It will cover its use in isolating microbes, transferring biological liquids, and how to avoid some common mistakes. Think about aseptic technique as moving a sample from point A to point B without introducing any contaminants into the mix. When pouring nutrient media from one bottle to another or isolating a pathogen onto plates, contamination can come from the bottles, the plates, the surrounding airflow, the bench surface, or simply your hands. Aseptic technique is all about minimizing exposure to as many sources of contamination as possible. Let's start by considering your work area in the lab. Never assume a surface is clean. You cannot know for sure who or what was resting on the bench before you arrived. Always wipe it down with 70% ethanol before and after starting any aseptic work. Even after wiping everything down, you still want to minimize unnecessary contact with surfaces. Watch out for the lids of bottles or plates and pipette tips. Anything that will come into contact with your samples should not touch other surfaces. Safety glasses, lab coats and gloves are all standard issue. Airflow can carry airborne contaminants, but we can deal with this in a few ways. You can light up a Bunsen burner and the updraft from the flame creates a relatively sterile area. There is an option to change the flame from orange to blue. The blue flame is much hotter and provides better sterility. The blue flame can be hard to see. Work as close to the flame as possible, but take care not to burn yourself. We can also control airflow through the use of tissue culture cabinets. Air within these cabinets is first drawn through a filter and moves across the cabinet towards the user in a smooth laminar flow. The carefully controlled direction of this filter airflow limits the exposure of airborne contaminants. We can use metal loops that need to be sterilized to transfer biological samples. Hold the metal loop at an angle in the flame until it is glowing hot. Cool it beside the flame for about 10 seconds before it is ready for use. You can also work with single-use items that have been pre-sterilized, such as pipette tips or spreaders. This is quicker to do, but can be more expensive than a reliable metal loop that you can reuse time and again. Let's put these principles into practice. The 16 streak or streak plating dilution technique involves spreading a sample containing microorganisms across the surface of an agar plate and gradually isolate individual colonies. Dip the sterilized loop into the liquid culture or pick a colony with the loop. Transfer this to the plate and spread it around roughly a quarter of the plate surface. This is the primary inoculum, the first point of contact for the culture. The loop is then sterilized before four streaks are drawn from the primary inoculum to a new area of the plate. This dilutes the culture with each new streak. We then flame the loop again and this process is repeated for four sets of four streaks, a total of 16 streaks. Remember to work close to the Bunsen burner and flame the loop between each set of streaks. Here we see what the results look like after a period of incubation. Notice that individual colonies are visible towards the last few sets of streaks. In patient samples, we often find more than one type of bacteria at the site of infection. To deliver targeted therapy against a specific pathogen, we need to isolate each microbe separately to do further testing. Using the 16 streak dilution technique, we can take a liquid culture broth containing E. coli and Serratia mycescens and separate them out into two independent cultures very quickly. The white and red colonies are isolated and very distinct from each other. They present E. coli and Serratia, respectively. Next, let's look at how we transfer liquids using aseptic technique. Liquids can be sterilized in bottles or tubes, so anything that touches the liquid needs to be pre-sterilized. Pipette tips, partial pipettes, and graduated pipettes are all common examples. Pre-sterilized items do not stay sterile for long. As soon as they make contact with airflow, non-sterile bench surfaces or your gloved hands, they become a potential source of contamination. For single use, pasta and graduated pipettes, you need to remove them from their wrapping. Avoid contact between the end of the pipette that will touch the liquid and any other surfaces. Graduated pipettes are used for larger volumes of liquid, anything over one milliliter, and its volume measurements are labeled on the side of the pipette. Both manual and electronic pipettes can be used. Now let's put your knowledge to the test. Watch the following demonstrations and write down all the mistakes that you can spot. Let's start with the 16 streak plating dilution technique. Hopefully you found all of them. Let's watch that again, this time with the mistakes highlighted as we go.
Next, let's look at transferring liquid broth. Again, write down all the mistakes you can spot. Let's watch that again with the mistakes in aseptic technique highlighted this time round. To recap, we went over the basic principles of aseptic technique, transferring cultures and liquids, as well as common mistakes to avoid. Contamination can derail weeks of work all at once. Good aseptic technique needs to be part of your scientific toolkit.